So you want to publish your research paper in a Scopus Index journal and you want to do it fast as well. And But you don't want to compromise the quality, you want to publish it in a really good journal. Now, in this video, I want to give you one of the number one secrets to being able to write research papers for good journals very fast and do it efficiently without getting stuck. If you follow this tip, you will really be able to write a paper in just a few weeks. Some of our clients do it in as little as four, three weeks. I've been able myself to write a paper from start to finish and submit it in as little as a week. So what is that secret? Well, let's take a look. Now, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowek and I run Academic English Now, where we specialize at helping PhD students and researchers publish papers in Scopus Index journals. And really, you know, throughout my own journey as an independent researcher and as a coach at Academic English Now, having worked with hundreds of PhD students and researchers, I've really been able to, to see as well, you know, what works and what doesn't work in terms of writing a paper. So, of course, you need the right structure and you need to understand how to structure your papers. You need to also understand what language to use. You need to understand what reviewers are looking for in a paper. You need to have the right topic. That's all true. But what we found is that a lot of the clients that come looking for our help, especially researchers, they already know that. They kind of already know how to write a paper and they have great research ideas that, you know, some of them are professors at, at the universities. What they struggle with though is actually getting the paper written and it's kind of counterintuitive because you might be asking yourself, well, if you know how to write a paper, you've got the language, you know, you know how to structure papers, maybe you've even published papers before, well, why can't you write a paper in a week or two weeks or three weeks? Well, the number one reason that we found that so many PhD students and especially researchers struggle is lack of focus. Now, there are so many distractions around us in, in the modern world that we are no longer able to focus easily. And the evolution has primed our brains to, you know, to be easily distracted. What, what do I mean by that? Well, think about when, you know, our ancestors kind of roamed African savannas and stuff like this. You know, when they, when they saw something strange or something caught their eye or, you know, they, they heard something, you know, their attention had to immediately shift to that because that could be a danger. That could be a lion that was just trying to eat them, right? So those people that did not get distracted and shift their attention immediately to the thing that they heard or saw with the corner of their eye would get eaten by a lion and they wouldn't, you know, pass on the gene. So that's why we are so easily distractible right now as well. But this is a huge, huge problem because if you cannot focus on a single task, such as writing a paper, which is difficult, it takes time, it can be painful, then you will never be able to achieve your full potential. So that's why you know, in this video, I really want to show you how you can also focus and really develop laser-like sharp focus that allows you to work for you know an hour two hours completely uninterrupted and get into the state of flow to be able to write your paper in a week in two weeks or in three weeks from scratch and submit it so there are of course you know lots of different techniques to achieve focus but the easiest one that i found and that i found works really well with the clients that work with us at academic english now is rather than trying really hard to focus, is to actually do the opposite, is to avoid distractions. So let, let me say that again, you know, rather than trying hard to focus and to fight distractions, what you wanna do is eliminate distractions. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, just look at this room where I'm recording this video. There is nobody here, there is nothing here apart from my laptop and my notebook with some notes that I can use. So I can more easily focus. Now, the reason why I come here to record this video or to work is that, you know, I have a six month old baby who is at home with, you know, with my wife at the moment. So being at home, while it's nice to, you know, to see the baby grow and everything, it's, it's really distracting. It's almost impossible to do any focused work. Sure, I can answer emails, I can do very shallow work, but doing really deep work just 
is not going to happen. So that's why I come here where I don't get any distractions, right? So what other things can you do to eliminate distractions? Well, you first want to identify what is the biggest thing that distracts you. You know, what is that thing that when, you tr when you're trying to focus, you're starting to write your papers and you type, it catches your attention, it makes you think, and it takes you away from your work. For a lot of us, and me included, in the past, it's the mobile phone, right? Mobile phones are terrible distractors. So what you really want to do is, number one, get rid of all the notifications on your phone, right? So you wanna to go to settings on your phone and, and switch off all notifications for all apps. That's that's the base for, for me. And I, I went to the point where like, you, you can't reach me at all when, when I'm working, you know? And sometimes this isn't good because, you know, my wife wants to call me because, I don't know, something happened at the house and I just don't answer because there's no way of reaching. But that allows you to focus. Now, I would go even a step further. I would delete all apps from your phone that can potentially distract you. So at one point, you know, I, I would like check Twitter, I would check Instagram and just like mindlessly scroll through Instagram feeds and stuff like this. Like you just want to delete all those apps so they're not tempting you because it's very difficult to resist temptation. It's, it's tiring to resist temptation and it depletes your mental power. The more decisions you have to make, the more temptations you have to avoid, the less brain power you have to focus on what really matters, which is the writing, right? So there is this sort of thing called decision fatigue that you can, you can look up and there's a lot of research on that as well. Eliminate all those apps like LinkedIn, email, whatever apps, social media apps you have on your phone, just get rid of all of them and do it right now. Pause this video and trust me, get rid of them. Okay. Now, the, the next thing that you want to do is like look at your laptop. Okay. Um, and you can see the screen of my laptop um, right here. And there is nothing on it. There are, there are no folders, no apps. There's just a recycle bin because I don't know how to, how to delete it. Right. And when I see people's computer screens, I can immediately tell and judge by that screen whether they're able to focus or not you know some people and this might be you you have like 30 different icons on your computer and it's just pure madness you know you want to clean it up like a clean desktop is a clean mind as well and it will allow you to focus now you also want to get rid of all the notifications on your laptop. So go into the settings on your laptop and get rid of any sort of like email notifications any of that stuff, you want to delete it. You should even delete, like, if possible, like the Outlook app and all that kind of stuff, you know? So it doesn't tempt you and, it, and you don't get any pop-ups. That's how you really achieve a state of focus. You start eliminating all the distractions. Now, once you've eliminated all possible distractions and you're in a, in a place like this where you can really focus and deep dive, um, another thing that I would recommend is listening to binaural beats. Um, if you don't know what binaural beats are, you can look up a playlist on Spotify and you know, it's really, it really helps to focus you. And they've done um, tremendous research on that um, as well, uh, showing that listening to binaural beats, I think around 60 or 70 hertz, uh, that sort of frequency really helps you to focus. So get some noise cancelling headphones so that you know you you don't you don't get distracted by outside noises and really put them on. I, I've really found that when I listen to binaural beats with those sort of headphones, it really puts me in the zone and I'm able to work consistently for an hour, two hours, sometimes three hours, just really kind of focused, very focused work. And then the last tip that I that I want to give you that has worked really well for myself and also my clients at um, Academic English Now is to block off time in your calendar. So you wanna hop on to your, to your Google Calendar or to your Outlook Calendar, whatever you use, and it should be your work calendar as a PhD student or as a researcher. And you wanna block off busy times when you're gonna be writing. So you wanna to commit to yourself, and this really is a commitment to yourself that you don't wanna break, that you're going to be writing your paper at that time. Time. And you want to schedule things, I think, in blocks of like two hours, you know? And the reason why I say use your work calendar is that that time comes up busy in case other people want to book meetings with you. And if you're a researcher, you will know that, you know, all sorts of people want to book meetings with you, you know? 
as an owner at Academic English Now, all sorts of people want to have meetings with me as well. So if I don't block my calendars for, for example, recording this YouTube video, it will never get done because I will be distracted by other things, meetings, teaching, all sorts of stuff, right? So block your calendar and have two hour blocks of writing. If you can't fit two hour blocks at the moment because you're really busy, start smaller. Start with half an hour or one hour, right? I like to do it in the morning when my mind is the freshest. Working on it, you know, in the second part of the day usually isn't that good. Research shows that, you know, if you wanted to do deep focused work, it's better done in the morning, actually. Even if you don't think of yourself as a morning person, usually for a lot of us, according to research, morning is a better time to do more deep focused analytical work. And the afternoons are much better for sort of creative work. So for example, generating ideas and stuff like that. But you definitely want to block it off in your Google or Outlook calendar so that nobody can book meetings with you and make that commitment to yourself that you're going to have that focus time and really, you know, pause this video right now and start thinking what distractions can you eliminate from your phone, from your computer, from your environment so that, you know, the, your environment where you're writing is really primed for focus. You're not trying really hard to achieve focus. The focus is there. You just need to sit down put your headphones on and you're in the zone. Now, if you found this helpful, but you want our personalized expert help to help you publish research papers in top Scopus Index Journal, then book a free one-to-one -one consultation and our expert advisors will be able to identify the main challenges that you've got right now and also propose um, a plan that will take you from where you are right now to being able to publish three or more papers every single year in Scopus Index Journals. And the link to that free one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video.